Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. Now Mark Breland has given his first interview since being sacked by Deontay Wilder and he did not hold back in his assessment of his former fighter. Now Deontay Wilder we know is kind of a one trick pony, he's not necessarily got much more than that and I'm guessing even Mark Breland knew that even though he didn't say it when he was working with a Deontay Wilder but now that he's not working with him he is very forthcoming with his opinion of a Deontay Wilder these are some of the things that he's had to say. He used that jab once in the fight with Stavern, and that was it. He don't jump rope, he don't hit the speed bag, and he don't hit the heavy bag. If I boxed the guys that he's boxed, I'd beat them. That's the bottom line. You say he has some good wins. A good win? Just that Luis Ortiz fight. That was it. So, that is quite a damning assessment of a Deontay Wilder's career, especially considering he was working with him for majority of it. And that wasn't just it, he went on to say that Deontay Wilder is done, his career is done, so therefore Deontay Wilder's is as well. And the fact that obviously these allegations were coming out towards glove tampering with Tyson Fury and a spiked water. He said that was ridiculous because he wasn't even using the water and offering it to Deontay Wilder, someone else was. This is also what Mark Breland had to say about that glove tampering allegation. I doubt it very much, he's not going to beat Tyson Fury regardless. Either J. Diaz is blind. But to be honest, that's how much he knows about boxing. Hell, he could have put a cast in there, and he wouldn't have known. So, he is really coming out with the heat on Deontay Wilder. Obviously he's gonna, because Deontay Wilder really put him in a harsh position to fire him for throwing in the towel and being the only one in the corner showing that kind of compassion, because let's be real, Jay Diaz didn't know to throw the towel. It was time, time was up, Tyson Fury was beating on Deontay Wilder, so Mark Breland saved his man. To fight for another day. Now what he is also saying in his assessment is that he does not believe that Deontay Wilder will come back, his career is done and I believe the way we have to look at it is who can Deontay Wilder fight and who can he beat in the top 5. Because let's be real, Deontay Wilder cannot expect to have another world title opportunity if he doesn't fight one of the top 5 heavyweights. He's talking about Charles Martin next, ok comeback fight, fair enough I take that one. But after that it needs to be a Dillian White, an Andy Ruiz, a Joseph Parker, fighters like that in the top 5. He needs to be going for those kind of opponents. If he doesn't, then what is he doing in the sport of boxing? Is he expecting to just fight Charles Martin, then get another world title opportunity? It's not going to work that way. There are more sharks in the water waiting for their opportunity just outside of the champions this time around. So he cannot fight a Bermain Stavern and get a world title. He has to fight... Joseph Parker, maybe Ruiz, maybe Dillian White, then he can have an opportunity at potentially Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua, but is he really going to beat Tyson Fury? I don't see it. I don't see him beating Anthony Joshua either. Because I think that in those top 5 of heavyweights, we are seeing heavyweights who are quite diverse and they are able to do different things in the ring. They are able to adjust. That is one thing Deontay Wilder is unable to do. He does have that big power in that right hand, but he has little else as well. He doesn't have a great jab. I mean, it's okay, but it's not of the level of AJ or Tyson Fury. Or even someone like Joseph Parker who is able to double it up and come around to the side. So there is always something for those kind of fighters to revert to if things aren't working. Whereas Deontay Wilder seems to try and plug away at the same thing every time. And that is land at the right hand. We've seen how he comes unstuck against a fighter like Tyson Fury who is able to take that right hand away and then exploit the weaknesses of a Deontay Wilder. It wasn't as simple as a Tyson Fury just putting a front foot fighter on the back foot. There was more involved than that. It was about the footwork, about the positioning, about the timing as well. And what Tyson Fury was always trying to do was keep him on that back foot. So stepping heavy with that lead foot to make sure that Deontay Wilder feels his presence. He knows that Tyson Fury is the bigger man as well. So if he gets in close, a Tyson Fury is able to tie him up and do whatever he wants. I mean, even on the inside, Wilder had no game fighting on the inside. Tyson Fury was the one doing that. So there was little that Deontay Wilder could do after that right hand stopped working. Many fighters going forward will now try what Tyson Fury has done, but many fighters will get knocked out doing that as well because they are not of the level of Tyson Fury. But some fighters will succeed because they have seen the way to beat Deontay Wilder now. And Deontay Wilder knows that as well. That is a big factor in this, the psychology of it. So with Mark Breland saying his career is over, is that true? It is true if he's not willing to take a big fight, if he's not willing to get in there with 
these fighters we are talking about, then his career is over. How can he expect to get another world title opportunity if he's not willing to take those tough challenges? And even if he does, he has to fight an Anthony Joshua or a Tyson Fury. He had a chance to rematch Tyson Fury in a third fight, but that fell at the wayside. We cannot kind of assume that that was any kind of accident, that it was an injury, then a force majeure, then they still couldn't agree a date in a December. So there must have been some other reason behind the scenes. They're going to come out, they're going to say that they still want it, because they have to save a face. What I would like to see Deontay Wilder do is forget about the World Championships. They're not important at the moment. They're going to be held up for the whole of 2021 anyway with this undisputed fight between AJ and Fury. So don't worry about that. It doesn't matter. He's been a World Champion and if he works hard, he could get there again someday. It's possible. But what I would rather him do is have his fight with a Charles Martin, then go and face at someone like Ruiz or Dillian White. I want to see him in those kind of fights. We've seen him in there with an elite level heavyweight. Let's see him at fighting these guys who he should be beating if he's an elite level heavyweight like he believes he is. If he believes he's as good as he is and he has a great win over someone like Luis Ortiz who is apparently the boogeyman of the division. If he's willing to take on those kind of fighters then go and fight a Joe Parker, a Ruiz, a Dillian White. Those are the kind of fights that Wilder should be interested in at the moment because if he beats a name like that then he's guaranteed a world title opportunity. Imagine that, Charles Martin in the early stages of this year, then later on go and face someone like one of those names we have mentioned, then world title chance in 2022, especially if you were to face a Dillian White and won that fight. I'm not saying he would, but if he did, then he has the WBC Interim World Championship. That is provided Dillian White beats Povetkin. But then again, if Povetkin wins, go for Povetkin. Then what Deontay Wilder has done is guaranteed himself a shot at the World Championship and he's earned it because he's fought a top 10 contender like himself. So that is the only way to get back to the top. That is the only way to really warrant a world title chance at the moment. If you consider the amount of heavyweights that are out there looking for their opportunity and in fact deserve that opportunity. So all in all, Mark Breland says that Deontay Wilder's career is over now. Does that have any substance to it? Well, Yes, only if Deontay Wilder allows that to happen. Is he willing to take less money to fight someone like a Charles Martin? Is he then willing to go and fight a tough contender to earn his shot at another world title? In fact, at the moment, he shouldn't even be thinking about world championships. There are things that he needs to change. Get a good trainer. That is the most important thing for him at the moment. Get a good trainer, start learning what he has neglected over the course of his career. There's not too much he can do. He is the fighter he is. He's not a prospect anymore, but there are still certain things that he can do to improve his game. It's just whether he is humble enough to understand that that needs to happen. And all of these conspiracy theories are not the reason why he lost to Tyson Fury. The better man won, and he wasn't that guy, so he lost. And that is the reason. One loss doesn't mean anything. Fighters lose. That's the way it happens. If you fight the best, you are guaranteed to lose. No one remembers the man who's, what? 100 and 0, I know there's no one who's done that, but no one would remember anyone who was 100 and 0 and never fought anyone. They're more likely to remember someone who's 20 and 10 but has been in great fights. Derek Chisora, he's lost 10 fights in his career, but will remember those fights against Dillian White, against Atakam as well. So that is the most important thing, being in those kind of fights. That is important now for Deontay Wilder. It's up to him if he wants to retire then that's up to him. But if he wants to come back, then he has to face these tough challenges. It will be interesting to see what decision he makes. Guys, anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below, leave a thumbs up, and a subscribe if you are new. Thanks guys.